Gail King is an American journalist, author, magazine editor, and former co-host of CBS This Morning, as well as the serious radio series Gail King in the House. But let's be honest, the one thing all of us know her best for is her unshakable friendship with one of the richest people on the planet, Oprah Winfrey. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. These two became best friends way back when in 1976 while they were both working at WJZ TV in Baltimore, Maryland. Little did they know that nearly 50 years later they'd still be playing a huge role in one another's lives. I'll get into the details on how as we go along, but for now we are going to kick today's tour off with a peek inside Gail's stunning New York City penthouse. Located on East 57th Street and situated on the 36th floor of a prominent Big Apple skyscraper, Gail King bought this luxurious apartment back in 2008 for $7.1 million. Boasting 2,530 square feet, Gail's enviable living arrangement includes 12 foot tall ceilings, gorgeous walnut flooring all throughout, as well as three bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms. According to listing details, the most jaw-dropping spot in the entire home, however, is her picture-perfect master suite that not only features three walk-in closets, two of which even have windows, but an ensuite with a spa tub and a separate glass shower. Of course, there's also a stunning eating kitchen that comes complete with an entire set of Viking brand appliances, as well as a dining room with some unique wallpaper. Better yet, for outdoor entertainment, Gail's penthouse also comes with its very own 750 square foot wraparound terrace that provides one of a kind views of the George Washington Bridge as well as the city below. A few years after moving into this place, Gail teamed up with interior designer Nate Burkus to give fans an inside look at her home. Unfortunately, the video clip of that event appears to be lost to time, but Gail would reveal during the course of that conversation that she had painted the ceiling of every single room a different color at the suggestion of her longtime friend Oprah. Since then, Gail has occasionally provided her fans glimpses of the interior of this home on social media, especially during the pandemic era, when she was stuck inside with nowhere to go. Just like that time, we got a taste of Gail's eclectic decor. Well, at least she had a pretty amazing home to recuperate in. We got an even better look at Gail's home when she shared some behind the scenes images from her home studio setup while working from home inside her family room. As you can see from those pictures, Gail's taste runs a little off the beaten path. It includes a passion for bright yellow lounge chairs that clash with the rest of her furnishings, like those wood paneled cabinets and floors that are covered in patterned rugs. Well, wanna know something interesting? It was actually Oprah who bought this home in the first place. According to her property records, it was her LLC listed on the official paperwork. In other words, Oprah likely acted as Gail's landlord and this wasn't the first time that they had made this arrangement either. While Gail King's former mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut might not measure up to Oprah's grand 20,000 square foot palace in Montecito, California, the one thing that both properties have in common is that technically speaking, Oprah owns the both of them. Much like with Gail's New York City penthouse, Oprah's shell company that was listed on the deed to this property when it was bought in 2000 for a reported $3.6 million. Gail got everything Oprah paid for and then some with a four-story colonial home that includes 10,433 square feet along with a two-story front foyer with a grand staircase, six bedrooms, seven full bathrooms, as well as three and a half powder rooms. Now, considering how long ago Gail used to live here, details on the interior are slim, but what I I can tell you is that the home was said to include deluxe amenities such as four fireplaces, a three car garage, a home theater, and a stunning third floor family room with window alcoves as well as a wet bar. In addition to the home's five regular size bedrooms, her master suite boasted a gigantic sitting room and a dressing room jam packed with the type of fits that you'd expect to discover in the closet of a woman who's friends with one of the richest people on the planet. With a home this big, you 
you'd expect the exterior to be equally spectacular, and this property certainly doesn't disappoint. Not only is there a swimming pool with an attached spa out back, but there's enough surrounding space that Gail and Obra could go for a hike together and probably wind up getting lost if they weren't careful. After moving into this mansion during the dawn of the new millennium, Gail would own the property for close to 15 years before listing it in 2015 and agreeing to sell it for $3.1 million, roughly 500,000 less than what was paid. Uh, I can't imagine Oprah was too pleased to eat that loss, but Gail made up for it by stepping up to the plate and providing her home for Oprah to use during a very important interview. Back in March of 2021, Oprah sat down for a highly anticipated and exclusive conversation with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry that was aired in 68 countries around the world. But here's the thing, according to reports, Oprah didn't shoot this sit down meeting at her own home. Instead, she used Gail's Los Angeles mansion as the perfect backdrop. That's how Gail became more or less the uncredited star of this two hour discussion, which saw Meghan and Harry touch on the difficulties that came along with stepping down as senior royals. They didn't want him to be a prince, not knowing what the gender would be, which would be different from protocol. As you can tell from all that lovely footage, the one area of Gail's LA compound we really got a taste for was its secluded 360 degrees of shrubbery that provided complete privacy for Oprah's convo. Not only is this stunning courtyard surrounded by epic stone pillars, but the greenery is picture perfect, thanks in large part to those humongous trees and potted plants. Over on social media, Gail's also given us a glance at the home's stylish living room, which features neutral walls and some lovely pale green accents, including a gorgeous floral arrangement displayed on Gail's dining room table, as well as some plush and comfy chairs. There are even striking sculptures here which tie the space together. As for the exterior, well that's been kept under tighter wraps, but thanks to a video Gail shared on Instagram, we do know that the front of her home includes some perfectly manicured grass and a smooth stone walkway made in the shape of a cross. We've been ordering them on this thing called Instacart. We've been ordering avocados like so every like every avocado. other day. Of course, considering what we've now discovered about her previous properties, the question is whether or not Gail actually owns this mansion or if Oprah owns some of the mansions. Considering Oprah's immense real estate portfolio, I mean, the queen of all media might just own this home as well, but I'm sure renting it out to her best friend makes her feel even better than if she lived here herself. Plus, this way they get to live in such close proximity to one another that they're only ever a short golf cart trip away. Well, there you have it, everyone. That'll bring this look into the homes of Gail King to a close. But before you head out, give this one question some consideration. If you were best friends with a billionaire, would you let them buy you a home or would you worry how that might affect your friendship? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all in the next tour. Bye.